Shrine in Baltimore, Maryland. During the War of 1812, the decisive Battle of Baltimore occurred here. I'm Francis Scott Key. Near this spot on September 14, 1814, after the battle ended and Baltimore was saved, the end of today's concert. More about that later. I'm thrilled to host MENC's 2005 World's Largest Concert. Let's begin today's concert with a song that describes our great nation. This land is your land reminds us that ours is a beautiful land of mountains, valleys, oceans, and prairies. Let's sing with pride as we join the Jacksonville Children's Chorus, the Jacksonville Symphony Youth Orchestra, members of the St. John's River City Band, and conductor Mike Davis in Jacksonville, Florida. Splendid. We're off to a great start. By profession, I'm a lawyer, and thereby rather good with words. Earlier, I told you that I wrote the Star Spangled Banner near here. Actually, I was on a rescue mission on a British ship several miles out there on the Patapsco River. Our next two pieces both mention rivers. Rivers transport people, supplies, and food. Rivers provide inspiration. They're an important part of our culture and are often used in songs to represent important things in life like peace, happiness, love, and freedom. The next two pieces 
a folk song across the wide Missouri, and a spiritual down by the riverside are good examples of how rivers can inspire. Here is conductor Jeffrey Clayton to lead you in singing Cross the Wide Missouri, followed by Mike Davis conducting down by the riverside.
folk songs and spirituals are an important part of our nation's history and culture, as is Fort McHenry. This is the enlisted men's quarters here in the fort. The men cooked their meals in the fireplace, ate over there, and slept in bunks like these. There were usually about 32 men living in these quarters. Not very much room, is there? But though it was small and not very comfortable, this was home. Home means different things to different people. You know about cowboys living outdoors herding their cattle. The next song, Home on the Range, gives us a good idea of what home was like on the wide open spaces of the prairie states. In the morning after the battle, our flag was still flying over Fort McHenry, and I knew that the fort and Baltimore were secure. I was filled with emotion and inspired to write a poem, which I called The Defense of Fort McHenry. Later, it got a new name, The Star-Spangled Banner. The words came from my heart. Poetry and music are expressions of the heart ways to say what we strongly think and feel. Expressing yourself is an important part of who you are. The next song speaks of gratitude and love. It's called Music of My Heart.
The American composer Aaron Copland wrote the next two pieces, Hoedown and Younger Generation. Now, I may be a poet by nature, but I know that music doesn't always need words to express a feeling. Hoedown was composed for an orchestra and doesn't have any lyrics, but it paints a colorful picture of cowboys and cowgirls dancing and enjoying themselves after a day at the rodeo. Hoedown truly sounds like America's heartland. But Copeland also knew the power of words, and so worked with Ira Gershwin, a great lyricist who wrote the amusing words to Younger Generation. Mike Davis will lead us in singing Younger Generation. But first, conductor Scott Gregg and the Jacksonville Symphony Youth Orchestra are joined by members of the St. John's River City Band in the rollicking Hoedown.
You are the younger generation, and more importantly, you are the future of the nation. Which brings us to the moment I've been waiting for and the reason that I'm here with you today. When I wrote those words, I didn't know that my poem would become the national anthem. I wrote those words with great pride in our country. And so I'm honored that it has been selected for such an important purpose. But did you know, MANC has learned that two-thirds of Americans don't know how to sing the Star Spangled Banner. So on March 10th, 2005, MANC launched the National Anthem Project in Washington, D.C. to help Americans relearn this important part of their heritage. And you, who have learned the song through the hard work of your music teachers, can lead everyone in performing the Star Spangled Banner right now. So please, stand and join in singing our national anthem. What a perfect ending to a spectacular world's largest concert. Thank you for playing and singing so well. And thank you, music teachers, for tirelessly preparing your students to participate with us. We've heard some wonderful American music today. Ballads, spirituals, folk songs, and the national anthem. Like Fort McHenry, these songs are an important part of America's history. I'm Francis Scott Key. Until next time, May music be at the heart of all you do, because music is at the heart of America, old and new. Teachers, to receive your certificate, please complete the WLC registration form at menc.org. For information about MENC's National Anthem Project, visit nationalanthemproject.org.